Welcome to the daily word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the letter to the Galatians, chapter four, verses twenty-one to twenty-four, twenty-six to twenty-seven, thirty-one, and chapter five, verse one. Tell me, you who desire to be subject to the law, will you not listen to the law? For it is written that. Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman, and the other by a free woman. One, the child of the slave, was born according to the flesh; the other, the child of the free woman, was born through the promise. Now, this is an allegory. These women are two covenants. One woman, in fact. Is Hagar from Mount Sinai bearing children for slavery? But the other woman corresponds to the Jerusalem above. She is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, "Rejoice, you childless one, you who bear low children! Burst into song and shout, you who endure!" No birth pains, for the children of the dustless woman are more numerous than the children of the one who is married. So then, friends, we are children not of the slave, but of the free woman. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. This is the word of the Lord. Disputes and reconciliation. How do you usually deal with disputes? How would you ease and resolve disputes? The Apostle Paul faced many controversies in his life, but he was always full of spiritual wisdom, and often used creative and innovative ways to resolve conflicts without losing faith. In the early church, the number of believers continued to grow, and churches were established rapidly in various places. The church life of believers was full of joy, helping each other and working hard to learn the faith. But at the same time, it was not without controversies and conflicts. The church in Galatia had Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians, two groups with different cultural traditions and habits of life. Controversy arose over their understanding and practice. Jewish Christians thought that once Gentiles believe in the Lord, they should follow the Mosaic Law or the Law of the Old Testament, because the law was made for God's people to obey. The Jewish Christians, by their long-standing rule, required that if a Gentile wished to become part of the Jewish community, he must first come under the Jewish tradition, which includes circumcision. This created a lot of confusion and difficulty for Gentile believers, and led to controversy and conflict. For the Gentile believers, are they not truly God's people, Christ's disciples, by repenting and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and being justified through faith? Why do they still have to obey the Jewish law? The Apostle Paul, aware of the plight of the Galatian church. Proposed a new way of thinking about the identity of God's people, based on the covenant of God's promise to Abraham, the revered father of faith, a promise more ancient than the time of Moses. Before the law existed, God had already chosen Abraham and taken the initiative to make him a promise, first recorded in Genesis 12, where God promised Abraham's descendants would become a great nation. And that all the nations of the earth would be blessed through him. By faith, Abraham did what God told him. Afterwards, God made more promises to Abraham, pointing to the future when he would become the father of many nations. Of course, the most imperative promise to Abraham at the moment was that his wife Sarah would bear a son. God's promise to Abraham had already laid the groundwork for future generations of Gentiles to belong to God and receive His promises. 
Paul uses God's covenant of promise to Abraham as a common ground between Jewish and Gentile Christians. The identity of God's people is based on God's promise, which began with Abraham and was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. The law of Moses was a thing of the past, and Paul hoped to use this new perspective to resolve the differences within the Galatian church. Paul also uses the examples of Sarah and Hagar, Isaac and Ishmael, to point out that when man does not act according to God's promises, but tries to override God's work by human means, the result is not freedom, remaining under the yoke of slavery, alluding to the yoke of the law. True freedom of life depends on a connection with Jesus Christ and on faith in him. It is in the Lord Jesus Christ that the fulfilment of the promise was given to both Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians, and this is crucial. Now that Christ has come, there is no need to go through the law in order to enter into God's presence and gain freedom of life. The fact that Sarah and Abraham did not act according to God's promise for a time brought about disputes and division within the family, and the Galatian church should learn from it and be careful. Paul's teachings, his arguments, the perspective he offers on problem solving are exactly what we can learn from. What is it that we rarely need to hold on to? What can be dealt with flexibly and even put aside? Too often disputes arise between people because they are so defensive with each other that they fail to see common ground and possibilities. As a result, the road to communion and reconciliation has been blocked. Let's have a time of reflection. Recall a dispute or conflict you have encountered. How did you face and deal with it at that time? If you have a chance in future to deal with a dispute or conflict, do you have a new perspective to resolve it? How would that be? Let us pray. Lord, in our family, our work, our life and church, we often encounter controversies or conflicts. Please grant us wisdom, a spiritual perspective and an open heart to resolve disputes, reconcile and serve, so that we may become one in truth, peace and love, and praise God with one heart. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.